What is good friends? We got more World Cup and we got Spain, I think, because this guy is named Gui Guilas. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry, my Spanish friends. And yeah, I don't know if this guy is like Greece. This kind of sounds kind of Greece, but I actually don't know which country this guy is on. I'll look it up after the game. I just found out that this is World Cup. So they're playing Auras, which is... <laughs> I'm not a fan of Aurus at the moment because like I was watching a replay, it was like Suicune vs Clefable, Command War and it was disgusting. And thankfully there's no Suicune, but there's a slow row which is potential. <laughs> Potentially Calm Mind. But yeah, I assume it's just gonna be a standard Zad Y Tita build with a pursuit Tita to get rid of Lattes. This is gonna be Either the Scarf Landro or um, Defensive Landro, obviously. Zemus, um, yeah, I don't know why I'm talking like you guys don't know. The Zemus obviously don't exist in Gen 6. Yeah, depending on the set, if he's Scarf Landro, he can go for U turn here, predicting the opponent to scout for Scarf. Or he can also go for Stone Edge if he just wants to play Turf because it's turn 1, but I would probably go for U turn if I'm Scarf Landro because. He's probably gonna go into Slowbro or Tangrowth here, fearing the Scarf, potentially. Exactly, he does just do that, and he does just U-turn, and that damage confirms that it's offensive Landris, I think, yeah. I mean, we can run the Kalk to be 100% sure, but it looks like offensive Landris damage to me. So he can bring out his, um, his Rotom and Volt switch here. Or oh, he can bring out his, if he has a um, bloom, not bloom doom, if he has like power hub solar beam, he can bring out his heat train and bluff that. Like he can, if he has it, he doesn't have to go for it, he can scare the slow bro out and set up his rocks. But I assume it's gonna be left over heat train. And. Mm -mm -mm, I assume Rotom or Clef is gonna come out. Not sure if Alakazam kills the slow bro actually from 60%, that's something else I could calc. Yeah, U-turn does 28 to 34 from Offensive Lando, that confirms Offensive Lando, like I said. And I want to call how much Alakazam does with a Shadow Ball, it does a 64 to 76, so that's a roll, so you can definitely go on Alakazam here. Yeah, definitely Alakazam is a good play here, yeah. Most Tangos are Rocky Helmet in in Auras, but since he already has a Slower, which is Fist Death, I could see this being Assault Vest, but if it's not Assault Vest Tangos, he has a really hard time switching into this Alakazam. If the Tita is not Chopper Berry, he just gets blown away by Focus Blast. Who PM'd me? Not sure, I'll check later. I don't want to be interrupted now. But yeah, I could see him going for oh, goes for substitute. Well, yeah, he's obviously. I'm so bad, guys. I'm sorry. I kept Mega Alakazam. This could be Life of Alakazam, but yeah, that's clearly that's clearly a Salvas Tangos. He's obviously a Mega Medicham. I don't know why I called Mega Alakazam. My fault. Man, I feel so bad. Why am I doing everything wrong today? Like, <laughs> it's just little things. It's nothing big, but I'm doing some stuff wrong today. Um. That does absolutely nothing, so I assume he's gonna go out and do his Medicham here. But if the Tangos has Sleep Powder, I could see him going for that. But I don't think it will be Sleep Powder, because that just screams Assault Vest. It took nothing from Psychic. I just calc um, Life Orb Psychic the 35 to 41 to AV Tangro, so I assume it's gonna be AV Tangro, exactly. And yeah, he's either gonna go into Clefable or Medicham here. I mean, Heatran is another option, but he can potentially go for Earthquake, so I wouldn't go Heatran. Like, Medicham obviously threatens this all with a high jump kick, but there's a slow bro in the back, so he would either have to go for Thunder Punch or double out breaking the slow bro. But yeah, I would probably go into Clefable, but he goes into Medicham. And now he's gonna double switch, I think. Or Thunder Punch, like I said. Um, double into what? Double into Alakazam on the Slowbo doesn't get him anywhere, because 
can just go back into Tangrowth on that. The slope was also at full with Regenerator, so we can also take a hit. I assume this is either gonna be... I assume it's gonna be T-Wave Slowbro, to be honest. Even though, if he has T-Wave on Thunderous already, maybe this is Calm Mind instead. But did he predict it and go for Thunder Punch? He did make the prediction, really nice play. And now he can go for High Jump Kick, predicting the... Um, some sort of pivot. Because the Tangrus might be able to take... How much does Tangrus take from High Jump Kick? Tangrus takes 78 to 93. So Thunder Punch into High Jump Kick would probably still kill the Tangro, so I don't really know what he's gonna pivot out into. If this is Adamant Medicham and he's Jolly Excadrill, will Jolly Excadrill outspeed Adamant Medicham? Jolly Excadrill does outspeed Adamant Medicham, so if he's Jolly Excadrill I could see him pivot, trying to pivot into that on the predicted Thunder Punch. But other than that, he doesn't really have a good play, like he just has to pick his forer if he's not fast drill and even if he's fast drill I could still see him going for high jump kick here predicting some sort of pivot from the opponent okay it's Greece versus Spain Finch just confirmed it but yeah I get I did guess correct that he was from Greece from the name and from yeah the GR but from the name too like because I wasn't a soccer when I was playing soccer or we call it football here in Germany I was in a club and that boy was called like, like he had a Greece name that had the three same letters at the beginning so that's how I basically figured it out. I mean it's not hard even if I wasn't, like even if I wasn't in a club with that guy it's pretty easy to figure out right, it sounds Greece as fuck. Um. Is it worth it to go for high jump kick here? That he, I would, yeah, he does go for high jump kick, predicting the excluder potentially. I don't think he had to make that play. They saying how in the chat, but I don't think he had to make that play. The only reason you make that play, like I said, is if you predict the jolly excluder will come out. But like, I probably would have just played it safe because the excluder doesn't even have anything to threaten your Rotom wash. It's not going to be mold breaker with Tyranitar most likely. So you could have just, you could have th thought about an aggressive play on the next turn and maybe stayed in with the Medichim. Yeah, on an Excadrill, even if that came out. Like, first, you don't know if the drill is jolly. Second, the drill might double back up, breaking the Rotom. So, I don't think he would have lost anything from leaking Thunder Punch. Deck with Thunder Punch into High Jump Kick should have killed this. But I, this is actually... Actually, I can understand why he made this play. Now, Thunder Punch might kill now. Okay, he just High Jump Kicks again. The reason why you would want to make that play is because of the Slowbro Regenerators out. And you would go for Thunder Punch on the Tangrowth, you would be forced to high jump kick on the next turn. Oh, it's another 50-50 if he goes back into slow bro. So I kinda understand I kinda understand why he made that play now. Because I didn't think about that the slow bro would get more health, he would regenerate it, so it was not in range anymore from Thunder Punch, and you would still have to predict a little bit. I mean it's still in range from Thunder Punch after high jump kick, but what I'm trying to say is he like has to take more helmet damage. I clearly didn't think this through 100 percent I assume he's just gonna go for Thunder Punch because he just made the aggressive play. He just made the aggressive play of going for high jump kick, showing his opponent that he's that he's wild and he's willing to take some risks. And I think he's just gonna go for T Punch this time. And I can see the opponent going into into Excadrill this time if he's jolly, like I said earlier, or I could see him trying to dodge. I don't really know. <laughs> like this is tough, dude, for the Spanish guy here. If you sack, if he sacks the Tangerus, the Alakazam becomes a big problem. Like with rocks up, Alakazam basically kills everything. The only way he has to revenge the Alakazam is like the drill. Yeah, he does make the play, so I assume he's gonna be Jolly Drill because he made that play. But I can see him staying in here, predicting him to double out on the Rotom because the Rotom is so obvious. But if he has rocks on this, I can see him going for rocks. But he has most most likely rocks are gonna be on Tita. But you have rocks go up and he loses the tango, so Alakazam is gonna go in, like everything dies. Um, if he hits the Focus Blast and Tita, that is. The only way like he has to revenge it is if his drill is in Sand Rush, if it's Sand Up to outspeed his Zam, and if he has like T Wave on the Thunderous, or if he regens, regens enough health on the Slowbro to live a Shadow Ball, which at the point, at the moment, he should be healthy enough to live one Shadow Ball. But he could not switch into Alakazam, so I'm trying to say. But he's either gonna go for Iron Head 
Wait in the Rotom slash Landorus. Or he's gonna double out. Like, Ironhead obviously doesn't do anything to the Rotom. But there's a fucking management in, the f in your face. So it's kind of risky to double switch. You know what I'm saying? Because if you predict here to double. <laughs> and if he only bluffed this and he's not jolly, he's gonna get blown away too here. If, he's, if, la if he take. If he catches the bluff and catches him on that. But. I would double into something if I'm Gilas. That covers the Rotom and the Landorus. Which would probably be the Thunderous or the the Zard, depending on the set. Yeah, I would probably double into Zard here. Zard sounds like a really good double. And I'm really wild, so I would double into Zard here, breaking the Rotom, then I would go for Focus Blast. He does double into Zard, does get the play correct, and I would go for Focus Blast here, because, you know, why not? I'm aggressive. Catch that heat turn on the switch. I mean, I'm assuming this is Zard Y, like I said earlier. Pretty obvious with the T-Term most of the time. I have seen Zard X on the same team, but it's just super rare. Like with a Tita on a team. Not on this exact team of same six months, that's what I meant. Um Solar Rotom is probably gonna be able to live one solar beam from full, but if Rotom takes a solar beam to the face, it's gonna be so low that Excadrill becomes a threat. Because it's offensive Landris, right? The Landris is choice scarfed, so it's not really a good switch in. The Landris is not a good switch into Excadrill. Um, like defensive Landorus switches into Excadrill pretty easily, at least two times. But yeah, offensive is a different story as Rotom Wash takes 95 to 112. And yeah, did he focus blast? I think I thought I said I would have focused blasted there. He does make the play, he does get it correct. Fire, fire, I would have made the same exact same play, double into Zard into Focus Blast. <laughs> okay, so you can rely on focus blast because he it's not that, like, a lot of people cannot hit, a lot of people cannot hit two Focus Blasts in a row. So if if, he's, if I'm the Grease guy, I'm either saying, let me dodge this real quick and go for Toxic, or he's gonna go into Landers, which is also a potential play. I was, like, I was about to say, Gila should Fire Blast breaking the switch, but then I'm like, there's no point in predicting that, because Zard is such a big threat. And you shouldn't let it get poisoned by Tren. And you should, if you hit the Focus Blast on the Tren, you're in such a good position. And if he switches out, if you hit, you also get good damage on Landers. Now he's forced to go for Stone Edge. I assume he's gonna go for U Turn. Um, slash Double Switch on the Slowbro. Because the. You don't wanna take Rocky Helmet, so he might double switch out. Even though the chip damage on Slowbro could be nice to kind of cancel out the Regenerator. Um, yeah, he's about to time out. Hopefully, he doesn't time out. But there's no way he goes for Stone Edge here. I know he threatens this with a Stone Edge, but he just he just loses all the momentum if he goes for Stone Edge and lets the Slowbro in for free. Because if he goes for Stone Edge and lets the Slowbro in for free, exactly, he goes for Uden. I completely agree with that play. Because if he goes for Stone Edge and lets the Slowbro in for free, the opponent has in a Slowbro versus a Landris, and he's forced out into something like his Rotom. So the opponent could then. Make an aggressive play, double back into Charizard Y and get another kill pretty much as long as he hits a focus blast on the heat turn. This is um, exactly why I agree with you turning slash double switching on the slow bro, but U turn is probably the better play because you want the slow bro at least kind of low, even though it would regenerate it's still super annoying to deal with. And yeah, it goes on the heat turn, and I don't know if he has solar beam on this, but the sun is up, so Slowbro can't really touch this with the scald. The scald is gonna bounce off heat turn's body, it's gonna be like 15% maybe. But he just throw up the rocks, gets T waved. If he had Toxic, I probably would have gone for Toxic. Just because the Slowbro is pretty annoying for his team. I assume we're gonna see the Tita switch or yeah, he goes into Tita. And we see either the Lava Bloom or the Toxic is what I was assuming, but he doubles out in the Rotom Wash, which is a cool play. And the Tangrus is pretty obvious here, right? So how how valuable is this Tyranitar and health on this Tyranitar for G for Gilas? I really hope this is pronounced somewhat correct. Yeah, I was about to say maybe he doesn't really need it at full. And getting up rocks to pressure the opponent is really nice because the opponent doesn't have hazard control. I mean rocks only hurt 
these four members and Medicham resists rocks but still if sandstorm is up he also tends to take chip damage from that I assume the Rotom is gonna volt switch out here predicting the Tangrowth I mean Hydro Pump is a fine play but I think it's gonna volt switch as he does with Dorotita I'm lagging a little bit man yeah this is going to Tangrowth the volt switch nice play nice play and now Alakazam basically gets a kill, right? I mean, Excadrill, if it comes... Excadrill can come out on a Psychic and threaten the Alakazam out. But that's like the only thing that can threaten it out. Everything else doesn't want to come in on it. And if he breaks that and goes for Focus Blast, he can definitely go for Focus Blast here. Because Focus Blast, as long as it connects, is a pretty much guarantees him a kill. Zap can switch in Rocks up. Tangrowth is obviously in range of Focus Blast. Okay, Thunderous can come in, but like Thunderous should die to Rocks, Focus Blast, and Psychic, but then it could play around if it has T Wave. Um, I mean, yeah, Focus Blast is 70%, so that's always. Do you want to risk missing here? I don't think. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I would have gone hard into X Cadrill, because if he predicts that. He didn't even have to break because he has Substitute. And this is really good for Laz, or however this guy's called. I didn't even think about Substitute. This is amazing for him because now he can't get Thunder Wave. And he can he can freely click um, Psychic here. Because if he goes in Tyranitar, it doesn't matter. The Psychic kill the Thunderous. I think Psychic should kill the Thunderous. Psychic does 79 to 93, so it should pick up the Thunderous if he's a life of them. And I think he's a life of from the cult that I ran on the AV Tangrowth earlier. He goes into Tita, but this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. This is gonna like a focus blast. He also wastes the sand turns, so I mean I can see him pivot back to get try and get the sand back up. But it doesn't really matter. Like as long as this other Kazem hits the focus blast here, the Tita is gone. If he switches out, everything else takes damage. Every Tangros can't come in as long as Focus Blast connects. Even if it misses, it's gonna get two killed. And he dodges. You know, Focus Blast is a good move. So yeah, he has to hit another Focus Blast here. He can go for a Substitute, but I don't think there's a point in doing that. I mean, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like Mega Alakazam, because, or Alakazam in general. Alakazam, like Blunder said it in a video, it would be so good if you if Focus Blast would always hit. If you didn't have to rely on that move, it's just frustrating in a tournament game. But yeah, this time it hits. It's Chubbleberry, this obviously doesn't matter at the range that he does add, and there was no Sunstorm either. Boosting this death of the tar, so that obviously blows it away. And I assume he's gonna go into his Slowbro might be able to take one. Slowbro should be at wait. So he's gonna go and thunder wave him. Okay, so slow it's I think it's the roll on Slowbro. It might be in the, the Greece Greece guy favor and the Greece guy. So maybe the Thunder Wave is the only play he has. So I would either go on a heat channel in the Rotom here. Because Alakazam can still put him work. Yeah, he has going to Rotom predicting the Thunder Wave. And he gets it correct. Amazing. I think he was kind of forced to Thunder Wave there because the Alakazam was such a big threat. And yeah, he can go for Hydro Pump or Volt Switch here, depending how he feels. Um, I think I would go for Volt Switch because I just don't want to let the Tangrowth regenerate for free. Because, like, if the Tangrowth comes in, I want my Breakers in. Which would be Alakazam again. If Alakazam comes in again, if he Volt Switches here on the Tangrowth, Alakazam comes in again and claims a kill. Did he Volt Switch? I hope he did. So, yeah, now Alakazam claims a kill. Really nice. Because he can't just click Psychic this time. He doesn't have to risk focus blast missing anymore because the main target on focus blast was the tyranitar and uh, excadrill if it's in in sand but excadrill is not in sand because the sand is gone so he doesn't have to predict that anymore you can just really spam psychic at this point at least on this turn this incoming turn 23 
Pretty sure they should pick up the Tangos from the Calc that I ran earlier. Um, he might live on a mineral. But yeah, I'm gonna Calc it again just to make sure. Uh, that's 35 minimum, never mind. If it's live observer, which is what I'm going off, just just the damage this has done is like makes me think it's live or Yeah, it's like it killed. Um Yeah, it's not a roll. Let me guys know, I know most of you guys would probably be more interested in Sun and Moon. But if it's live, I'm obviously gonna be try to cover and like if I'm there I'm trying to cover the RS games too. I saw a replay of RS earlier advantage game. I'm not sure if I'm gonna record that though. Because it was like an 80 turns game and I'm not really the biggest fan of Auras. And that would be I think painful for me to go through that, so I'm probably not gonna record that. But yeah, this just pick up the tangles with the psychic. Gilas didn't really have a play that he had to sack something. And now I assume he's gonna play aggressive this time. Um, I could see Last staying in here, which is really aggressive and maybe not necessary. But I could see, see him staying in here, predicting the Thunderous to predict the Rotom Wash. Um, now I think you just click T Wave. You always you have to. You have to click T Wave, right? This is almost too big of a threat. Because the Rotom. This shot Volt Switch early and it's 39 to the Rotom, so I'm trying to figure out if it's Specs Thunderous. Um, Thunderous! Uh, let's just say this versus Rotom. How much should Volt Switch do to the Fist Dev Rotom? Oh god, why am I taking so long to figure out Rotom Wash? Yeah, I don't think this is Specs. He goes for Hidden Power, Ice Breed in the land was like, what a god play. Um, I'm not really sure if I would have gone Landris. Landris covers the Thunder Wave and the T-Build. I know that you want health on your Rotom for the Excadrill. Um, but I probably would have gone Oakle Fable there or Heatran. I mean, Oakle Fable kind of wins the game if it gets up a command, if it's that sad. Yeah, Oakle Fable should be command on this team because Heatran was rocks. Um... I mean, he didn't have to make that play, but he's still in a fine position. So he's gonna f either FedEx the Slowbro and go for Thunder Punch, or he's gonna go for the obvious fake out, as it should pick up the Thunderous. I don't know why you would go and manage him if it doesn't kill the Thunderous, so he should be confident that it's killed. Fagot does a 35 to 42, so it's a roll. Maybe he has Bullet Punch, not really sure. But he should be Ice Punch and fake out in the last two move slots. So this should Thunder Wave, Volt Switch and Hidden Power Eyes, so what is the last move gonna be? Oh, it's, it showed Leftovers, oh man, I was thinking that was Specs when it showed Leftovers. Yeah, this should play it safe. And I think he's gonna high jump kick keep breaking the extra drill. Even though, how much this... This might be a roll, the Thunder Punch on the slow bro. Thunder Punch is 51 to 61, so it's a roll in his favor and he gets the roll and the slow bro is gone and I think... Yeah, Lazo is in a really good position now. I finished that deep punch max damage right now. I mean, that wasn't max damage, right? Gets the rapid spin off, so it's confirmed Jolly Drill out sped the Medicham. And now he goes into Rotom Wash and clicks Hydro Pump and claims his kill. Oh, the Zard is at full, never mind. The Zard can come in on the Rotom Wash. So it is kind of a, maybe, if, I don't know if it's a 50-50, but I would maybe go Roto and Volt Switch predicting the Zard Y. Uh, I guess he can just go into, um, yeah, Alakazam is a fine play here. Alakazam is a fine play here. The thing is, it's still kind of 50-50. Between Focus Blasting and Psychic predicting the Thunders on the Switch. 
Because Focus Blast should not kill the Thunderous, obviously. It's a life of Focus Blast with the Thunderous. I mean, it should not do that much. It, should, it does 45 to 41, so Focus Blast has a chance to kill. I think I would have gone for Focus Blast because it has a chance to kill the Thunderous. There's already show left over, so it's not a Soul Fist, so I don't think it lives one. But yeah, he goes in a Rotom, which... Yeah, you can Hydro Pump to get damage off on his art. Like, Hydro Pump is overall the safest play, but... The more rewarding, but a little more risk risky play is Volt Switch. Like, if you get Volt Switch on his art correct, you're in such a good position. Then you get your Alakazam in again. Because Volt Switch from Rotom Wash versus a Charizard Y should do... It should do like 40%. He does go into Charizard. Did he Volt Switch? He did Volt Switch like a god and does 48%. Yeah, I was thinking it would do like 40%, but it does 48 And yeah, this should be in range to die from Alakazam Psychic. It does 58 to 69. If uh, the Y doesn't have any HP, and even if he has any HP, this is not gonna live. So yeah, Alakazam clicks Psychic here. I mean, he can still go on an Excadrill and then try to dodge a Focus Blast. But other than that, he doesn't have a play at this point. Like, you obviously cl click Psychic here 100% of the time. You don't play around it to that why. Yeah, this is... That was really nice play. Like, like risk, reward... <laughs> yeah, it was risky, but it was kind of obvious that he had to make that play. <laughs> he goes for that one move right here in the Excadrill, I will go insane. Um, he has no reason not to click Psychic here, so yeah, that's my opinion. As the Excadrill does come out on the... Oh, he goes for Substitute, come, stop flexing, good lord. So as long as this Focus Blast here hits, this Alakazam just wins. Uh, substitute again was a good play... ...in the sense that Alakazam... That, oh my god, he hits and he just wins. It was a good play in the sense that Thunderous can't T-Wave you. But I don't think it was necessary. But yeah, really well played, um, aggressive and well played. <laughs> Psychic picks this off and Psychic picks off the Thunderous. And last, I don't know how this guy's called, picks up the win for Team Greece over Spain. Thank you guys for watching. I will be back later with more World Cup. Snowy is going to be playing in 20 minutes. Um, I might actually, I'll probably upload this game after Snowy. I'm not sure yet about that. Stay tuned for more World Cup, stay tuned for some short on life, but most of my channel is going to be um, tournament coverage, you guys know this. And I know most of you are subbed for tour coverage and not for my short on life. Because a lot of PokéTubers do short on lives. Not everyone does do record tour games, like at least not in my, like how do I do it, I record so many games. Sometimes the narration is like not the best because I record like 10 games in a row or I'm tired, but... I hope you guys appreciate that F young effort we're putting in here and Dockridge signing out. It's really nice to see Team Greek win, even though um, Poig is on Team Spain, I like him, so that's a bit sad too that his team lost one game, but it's only one game, so this World Cup, there's a long way to go, nothing is over yet, and peace out friends.